Please welcome Francis Reshevsky. Good afternoon. A truly democratic planning process is inclusionary and transparent. With Mayor de Blasio's affordable housing plan set to significantly alter the physical and environmental landscapes of communities across the city, MAS has made it a priority to empower local residents to take part in the planning decisions that will shape their neighborhoods. The next two sessions will mark the official launch of two resources designed to serve as key tools for citizen engagement. The first is the New York City Neighborhood Planning Playbook, an interagency collaboration between the Departments of Housing Preservation and Development and City Planning, as well as the Economic Development Corporation. The, this collaboration seeks to simplify the planning process and help the public engage in neighborhood planning efforts. The second is who gets it done and how. MAS's new guidebook to ensure that community stakeholders and neighborhood organizations speak the same language as government and private industry counterparts and can collaborate and build consensus about the future vision of the city. MAS is already using this guidebook in neighborhoods across the city through the MAS Livable Neighborhoods Program. And as a representative of Con Edison, I'm proud to be a supporter of this effort. Together, these two documents empower New Yorkers to play an engaged and informative role in the future of their neighborhoods. Please welcome Deputy Commissioner Daniel Hernandez to present the city's planning playbook. <clears throat> the role of the planner is changing. Well, maybe it's, it has changed, and uh, we need the change planner. It's not the Howard, Ro Howard Roark of the Ayn Rand novel who, who's an architect of the design of the city and uh, creating solutions for people, nor is it the bureaucrat, um, as Robert is in Robert Moses, um, sort of the bureaucrat in the government agency creating decisions and solutions for communities. Maybe it's a little bit towards the outside of that beam, uh, closer to Jane Jacobs, a method of observation of city life and being able to talk and listen to people about their lived experiences in neighborhoods. So it's about trying to have fun with planning. I propose a group of professionals, professional planners, and communities that are problem solvers, design thinkers, well, citizen planners. The opportunity to become a true planner that moves beyond the technical planners that we know we have available to us doesn't come along very often. It takes leadership and strength to really break old habits of planning and planning practice. We currently have a mayor who has asked us to be citizen planners and engage our communities. This also asks, comes at a time when we're experiencing amazing crisis. It's an affordable housing crisis and there's nothing like a crisis and real fears to really bring people together and, wanting, and them wanting solutions. I'm, my office, the Office of Neighborhood Strategies at the Housing Preservation and Development Department, was created specifically to engage communities um, so that solutions were done in collaboration with communities. It's what people want. People want to be a part of their present as well as a part of their future. So it's not necessarily anymore about, we're changing the paradigm, it's not necessarily anymore about being negotiators and advocates of solutions. It's actually working with communities and being problem solvers and design thinkers with them and allowing them to become also planners, problem solvers, and design thinkers. So we had to ask ourselves, how are we going to do this effectively? Three agencies came together, um, HPD, Economic Development Corporation, and the Department of City Planning, and we spent about four or five months together thinking through a process in which we actually had to organize ourselves to effectively then engage communities um, in a planning process. Out of that process, um, we created the Neighborhood Planning Playbook, which just was completed in October um, this month. Um, and its strategies were actually to think about ways that our, uh, our agencies, the prime agencies actually doing and planning in neighborhoods, um, could then collaborate with other city agencies effectively. Um, so we brought all these agencies together at various times while creating the planning playbook and actually while we're out now in neighborhoods. 
So what we proposed in the planning playbook was we as data planners, we have all this information available to us, um, and actually gathering that as part of the early process, but we realized that that's not, just, that's not the only way that we could um, develop solutions, that we had to actually go out into communities and understand how the data really related to the lived experiences of people in neighborhoods. So this is the process um, that was developed, um, and, and it's really a project management tool. It was intended for the city to actually figure out how to work together, so it's, it wasn't necessarily a top-down approach, but it was then an opportunity for us to communicate how we're organizing ourselves to effectively engage them. So it was both, a, it was a combination of a top-down as well as a bottom-up to actually meet in the middle so that we can have an effective planning tool and effective planning process. Part of it also meant ways of communicating complex data that we have at both the city level as well as the, the, the neighborhood level of the issues that we understand, again, from data, but how we can communicate that so that communities can then use that data um, to plan for themselves as we arrive into the neighborhood to plan with them, they already are beginning to develop um, solutions. These are some of the graphics that we've done um, to help and work with people um, in sort of uh, transcribing and communicating some complex issues about area median income, the household income, rent burdens, and other things that are affecting their daily lives in their neighborhoods. So the objective of this playbook is to create transparency, cl clarity, and collaboration. People can only engage with us if they know how we're actually intending to engage with them. So the idea then is to actually make this process publicly available to communities as, as, as we go out into the communities, into the different neighborhoods, so that they can effectively engage with us. It's clearly a decision-making tool, um, but it's not one that is new. It's actually one that many planners use across the, the globe and actually many businesses use to, to create um, business plans. Um, but most importantly, our goal was to, so that we could bring it out to the communities so that we engage the silent majority, the community voices that oftentimes we don't hear. We go to community boards, we hear the same voices, we hold workshops and we continue to hear the same voices, but this was an attempt to actually bring information and be out in the neighborhoods on the ground to be able to listen and engage people in the planning process. It's an important process right now, particularly because we're in five, and the panel talked to us previously, with the, particularly with the Mandatory Inclusionary Housing Program, we're out in seven neighborhoods around New York City, and there will be more. So as we roll the play, planning playbook out, our intention is to use the planning playbook as the basis upon which we can then meaningfully engage ourselves, different city agencies, and so that the communities know how they can meaningfully engage with us as well. So don't be a yes, uh, be a yes sayer and not a naysayer to, um, so that we can, can work together to actually create more citizen planners, a citizen planner myself, but create citizen planners in the communities in which we work. If you want more information, uh, the planning playbook process uh, chart will be on HPD's website starting next week, and you can contact me personally if you want more information. Thank you very much.